Today our topic is compound inequality, so our essential question is how can I write, solve, and graph compound inequalities? First off, let's we'll talk about writing and graphing the compound inequality. So our vocabulary, a compound inequality is two inequalities. joined by the word and or the word or. All right, and then just a reminder of what some of these words mean. At least that is your minimum amount. So if you need at least 60 watermelons, it's a lot of watermelons. So let's bring that down to you need at least three watermelons for your picnic. Your minimum value would be three, but you could have more than three as well. So minimum and the sign we use is greater than or equal to. At most is the opposite, so that's your maximum. So if you want at most 10 people to come to your party, that's the top off. You can't have any more than 10, so we would have less than or equal to as our inequality sign. So for a compound inequality, an and compound inequality, we have all real numbers less than 6 and at least 2. So there's the and in the middle, and it breaks apart the two inequalities. So the first piece is to be less than 6. So we just write x is less than 6. The second piece is to be at least 2, so and x is also at least 2. So remember, at least is that greater than or equal to sign, because it's your minimum, at least 2. The graph of this is going to have both the numbers 2 and 6 on your graph. For x is less than 6, we need an open circle at 6, and we shade less than. 5 is less than 6, so we shade in that direction. But then we have to add on the other piece of x is greater than or equal to 2. That's going to have a closed circle, and greater than 3 is greater than 2, so we shade in that direction. So it meets in the middle. An and graph is going to be shaded in the middle of the two numbers. Or is pretty much the opposite of that. So for our or compound inequality, we have all real numbers greater than 6 or at most 2. So that or goes in the middle. We have the one piece greater than 6, so x is greater than 6, or x is at most 2, so that's your minimum value, which means everything can be less than or equal to 2. Again, we need both the numbers on our graph to graph this. x is greater than 6, so greater than 6 means an open circle at 6, but greater than 7 is greater than 6, so we shade to the right. x is less than or equal to negative 2, we're going to have a closed circle at 2, and then we're less than. So 1 is less than 2, so we shade to the left. Okay, a little bit more practice with some real world problems. A crane sits on top of a camera car and faces toward the front. The crane's maximum and minimum height above are shown. So the maximum is 18, we can go no higher than 18 and the minimum is 4. We can go no lower than 4. So we want to write and graph a compound inequality that describes the possible heights of the crane. So if our maximum height is 18, that means x can be less than or equal to 18. We can't go any higher than 18, but we can go below 18. And then our minimum is 4 feet. That means we can't go any lower than 4, but we can go above 4. So that means x can be greater than or equal to 4. We are going to need either an and or or in the middle, and to figure that out, we're going to graph this. So we need to get 4 and 18 on our number line. So I'm going to count by 2s. And then we just graph the two pieces. So we have x is less than or equal to 18. It's a closed circle less than, 16 is less than 18, so we're going to shade to the left 
And then our other piece, x is greater than or equal to 4. Because it has the equal to piece, we close the circle. Greater than, 6 is greater than 4, so we shade to the right. This meets in the middle, which means our word is and. So x is less than or equal to 18, and x is greater than or equal to 4. Next real world problem, in order to be admitted for a certain ride at amusement park, a child must be at least 36 inches tall, so they need to hit that 36 inch mark, and less than 48, so they can go anywhere from 36 to 48 inches. Write and graph an inequality that describes the height of children that cannot be admitted. So we want the opposite. So we want all the values that are up here, and down here that they cannot be admitted. So at least 36 inches would be x is greater than or equal to 36. So the opposite of that would be x is not equal to and not greater than, so less than 36. That would be all these values down here. We are going to have a word in the middle. And then we need the other piece less than 48 inches tall. So that piece is x is less than 48 inches. That's pretty self-explanatory, but again, we are working with those that cannot be admitted. So we need the opposite, which would be x is not less than, but greater than, and it can be equal to now 48. Now we just need to graph this on our number line. So we need both 36 and 48. So I'm gonna count by twos. or I mean, not twos, fours, my apologies. Counting by fours to get 36 and 48 on our graph. X is less than 36. We'd have an open circle at 36 and shade to the left because 32 is less than 36. For X is greater than or equal to 48, we'd have a closed circle at 48. 52 is greater than 48, so we're gonna shade to the right. This graph is split apart, so that means our word in the middle is or. All right, one last piece, and that's on the back of your notes. It's solving and graphing compound inequalities. Now, if you look, this inequality kind of looks a little bit weird. We have negative 12 is less than j minus 12, which is less than or equal to negative 11. This is an and compound inequality. And all we have to do is just know how to break it apart. So there are two inequalities in here. One I'm boxing in red, which is negative 12 is less than j minus 12. Stop when I get to the next inequality. And then the other piece is actually includes part of the first inequality, which is j minus 12 is less than or equal to negative 11. So that piece in between the two inequalities, j minus 12, goes to both inequalities. And then our word in the middle is and. Now to solve these, it's just like solving a normal inequality. We just solve the inequality. So get the variable by itself. Undo the minus 12 with a plus 12. That crosses off. We're left with j. And negative 12 plus 12 is 0. Now 0 is less than j. We can leave it like that or we can rewrite it as j is greater than 0. Either option is okay. So next inequality, we have j minus 12 is less than or equal to negative 11. Undo that minus 12 with a plus 12. We get j is less than or equal to negative 11 plus 12 is 1. And goes in the middle. So j is less than or equal to 1 and j is greater than 0, which means we need 0 and 1 on our number line. J is greater than zero, we should have an open circle at zero, shade to the right. J is less than or equal to one, close circle at one, shading to the left, it's and so it should be between. Last example is an or compound inequality. The ors are always split apart already. Now we just have two inequalities that we need to solve. Start with this one here on the left. Undo that plus 18 with a minus 18. 
we get z is less than 19 minus 18 is 1. Solve the other inequality. Undo the minus 14 with a plus 14. z is greater than negative 4 plus 14 is 10. Put the word or in the middle. So z can be less than 1 or greater than 10. So find a way to get 1 and 10 on our number line. Less than 1 would be open circle and shade to the left. Greater than 10, open circle, shade to the right. It is or, so we should have the split apart. That's all the notes I have for you today. Thank you for watching this video, and please subscribe to my YouTube channel.